Okay, so Brant, your book is called Blessed Are the Misfits. My first thought, because I haven't gotten to read the whole thing yet, I've read pieces, but how would you define a misfit for someone who might be thinking about reading this book? Well, I mean, it depends on obviously context, but I'm actually talking about spiritual misfits. And those of us who, if we go to a church or something and maybe everybody's getting emotional and they're raising their hands and they're super excited and you're kind of like, I'm not feeling this. So you feel like you're not a spiritual person or people will tell you you're not because you don't talk in a certain way. Like I feel God in this place. Or, I can just feel his loving arms around me. Like that's fine for some people, but there's a whole lot of us that don't feel that even in college or early adulthood and so on and so forth, I just suspected something is wrong with me or I suspected it's because of my own sin. I'd be caught up in things. I'm like, that's why. And as soon as I, if I ever got over these sinful nature things, like the stuff I'm doing wrong or thinking, then finally I'd be filled with whatever everybody else has. Oh, wow. And I actually got up to speak at a church one time. It was several years ago when I was in South Florida. And I asked people, it was after a big worship band experience or whatever you call it. And they were great. The band was great. Music's incredible. You got the videos and the lyrics up there and people are all into it. And it's dark and there's like lasers and fog. And, and I got done, they got done and I got up and I asked, so how many of you don't feel like you think everybody else is feeling during worship? Like you're like, you're missing something. And I had them raise the house lights. This is a big church. And more than half the people, I swear, raise their hand. Like, wow. I feel like I'm missing out on like. That's fascinating. There's a whole lot of us that don't feel it, but you're made to you're made to suspect because we don't address this stuff. Or you're made to sus expect or suspect somehow that you're not okay. Like God is, they're tight with God, and I'm not. What's the matter with me? But after actually entertaining the idea that actually in Scripture spirituality is not about emotion, it ne it really isn't. But we associate being spiritual with being emotional. It's really freeing to be able to say, maybe to yourself or to a friend who's not cut out of that cloth too, like that doesn't make you unspiritual. What God is actually looking for, what he considers spiritual and what we consider spiritual are two different things. He likes obedience. Like that's, that's what he wants from me is a heart for the poor, the marginalized, the broken. Again, for somebody who's all about emotion, they may not like that message because that's their basis. But I would say, give us a chance, <laughs> the rest of us, for a lot of women, I think they're, they're worried about their husband's lack of spirituality because he doesn't feel anything during the worship service or he's not like, give him a chance. Sometimes it's the women in the relationship too. Sure, sure. I've had a lot of women say, that's me and I feel out of place around other women because they're so emotional and they have these feelings and they just talk about God in this way that I can't relate to. Right, and their personality is just so different and their yeah. perspective is different. Might be analytical. By nature, yeah. maybe like me, where they're also a little bit skeptical, or they kind of they they just like to take a look at things, and they're not in it like everybody else. Like I go to a sports event, I'm not jumping up and down screaming the whole time. I'm watching. Yeah, that's my personality, and I think God actually loves me anyway. <laughs> yes, I think so, so too. Yeah, and just the other day, we got in a conversation in the kitchen mm -hmm. with some of the other uh, staff around here, and we were like, some, and there are people here who experience God in some of those big ways, and I think that that's beautiful. It That's is. great. It is. And just like maybe you need to look at them and be like, yeah, that's beautiful for you. They can still look at someone with your personality and your experience and totally. say, I see God working in your life. Like, tell me more about what that's like. Right. I think so, that's really cool to get that understanding happening. Totally agree. That understanding has to happen because, you know, when Paul was describing, hey, we're all part of one body. We have different functions. Still in the back of people's mind, like, yeah, but you're only part of this body if you talk like this, right? or if you feel this way, or if you love music. Well, what if music doesn't make me get goose pimply, you know? I love music, but it's not everybody. Like I talk about going to the cure hospitals. I think part of it for me, when I'm in the OR watching a little life being stitched back together, and it's a kid who's been mocked her whole life. She might be 16 years old and she's got a surgery. And I know people are praying for her and I know the difference this is gonna make in her life, that makes me emotional. Yeah. So there's different things for different people. And I'd like to think that it doesn't make me less spiritual. Yeah, that's a powerful message. Now, I wanna talk more about kind of church and being in a church with this different type of perspective, like uh -huh. we're talking about. And you've talked a lot about how you're walking this out also um, with autism. Uh -huh. And so what is your 
experience been like in the church, both, you know, where have you struggled, but also how have you seen people in the church step up and like do it right and kind of include you in community? And how have you been able to step up and, you know, be in community with your own unique perspective? That's a great question. I may not have a great answer, um, but the struggle, to start with the struggle, first of all, because it's social, um, I give people the wrong impression all the time. Like when I make eye contact with you, I'm literally like, this is what humans are supposed to do. Make <laughs> eye contact with Rebe. You're hey. doing a great job. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, but I don't naturally do that. And I have something else too. I have a neurological condition that makes me move my head back and forth a lot. If I'm trying to read something, um, my head is always moving or I'm, I'm thinking about something else. I'm doing this. And so people don't understand that. And you yearn, no matter whether you're on the autism spectrum or not, no matter how much of a loner you are or not, you actually do yearn for relationship. And you do want people to like you. So if you're not making eye contact and you're doing this, or you speak in a really blunt way, like a lot of people do on the spectrum, um, it can make you hard to like. I always felt like the church should be this place though that we're, we get that people are different, so we love them anyway. And when I have found that, when people have done it right, and they're like, that's just Brant, don't worry about it. He's also really good at this. He's actually really smart, or he's really, he's really good at dissecting something logically, or he's really an asset when it comes to this. Like, that's, that's medicinal for people to hear. So that there's somebody in your church group or your community that doesn't naturally smile. They don't put people at ease naturally. I make people scared naturally <laughs> or mad. Because they, because I'm shaking my head no. Like, what's your, what's your problem? And I, I don't make people feel. I'm like, I'm sorry. I didn't know what was going on. Um, if you're somebody who looks past that and loves somebody anyway, it's like sweet medicine. It's like a balm. Like, thank you for liking me anyway, because I don't know how to do this. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to see the church be like that, more relational, more understanding. You would draw in a lot of weird people. <laughs> But I think that's what Jesus yeah, did. It's not a bad thing. Exactly. Yeah. It's the best thing. I think people are like that are more interesting, but I'm biased. Um, yeah, there you go. Is there, now, if you don't have a specific story, that's okay. But is there a story that you think back on, even in your own experience, and you think, ah, oh, this is exactly, you know, this gave me hope, and this is an example of how we can do it right and what we should strive for with people who are maybe feeling like a misfit? Yeah, you know, there was a girl, I, we went on a missions trip one time to Mexico. I was a youth sponsor or whatever with the high schoolers, which was interesting. Um, but there was a, a girl, I love telling this story because I'm like, there, there was a boy who was extremely popular and outgoing and just took over the room and dominated everything. And it's hard to like that guy. He was very social and big athletic kid. And, started on the big high school football team. And then there was a girl who was difficult on everybody's nerves. And she was very different. And she was battling some health issues and some brain issues that she'd gone through. And frankly, people didn't want to be in the car with her. They didn't want to be in the van. They didn't want to be near her because she was annoying. And I remember one morning before we went out to our work site and I turned around and behind the tent was that boy and that girl and he was down on his knees and he was tying both of her shoes. And I was like, now that is beautiful. Because he was actually, the, in terms of personality, the least likely I thought to do something like that. But you don't realize too, if somebody isn't used to social success or they're used to being annoyed, they pick up on it. So I'm sorry I'm getting emotional about it. No, I, I can okay. tell it means a lot to you. Yeah, well, it's That's just, awesome. but you don't realize, and th but they remember it forever. Mm -hmm. And I remember another kid that was in, a, in my youth group, and he was like that too. He was very tough to take. And the kids didn't want to be around him. And I didn't want to be around him, to be honest with you, because <laughs> it was so hard. Yeah. Just difficult. All his health issues, his brain injury, all this stuff had gone into this. It was just hard to be around. And I remember his mom saying, hey, I need to talk to you about something. And she was like, I need to talk to you in the hallway. This is a church. And she's like, let me tell you something about the way you guys have been treating Chris. And I'm like, here we go. He loves you guys. He can't believe how kind everybody, I'm like, we're not kind. <laughs> I was worrying about not being kind, but yeah. the fact is that any kindness 
is so fundamentally different to, to some people's experience that if you can just quit hanging out with all the cool people or being worried about yourself, and do anything kind at all, they remember it forever. It's so powerful. We, it is. We underestimate it, probably. I was like, I mean, I grief. probably do. I felt guilty about it. And at the same time, she's going, he is so thankful for this group. I'm like, he's just somebody even put up with him. So when when we go beyond that, and like we're actively saying, my tolerance of difference and people being annoying, I'm going to love them anyway. In fact, I like it when they're that way. Bring it on. It's so profound. And if we just would quit stop trying to put on a show and start thinking about how do we welcome those people in a relationship, it would be earth shaking. So yeah, I've seen it. I know what it's like. I know what it's like when somebody says about me instead of being intimidated or angry at me or threatened by my, the way I look or the way I'm shaking my head or just says, that's just Brant. Like, thank you. So yeah, it can be good. Yeah. No, that's, I think you're onto something here. <laughs> I do. So thanks for sitting down and telling us about it and just giving us a reminder and some examples on how we can be that person, sure you know, for somebody else. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Good job, easy. Good. That was so good. That makes my heart just like so happy. Good, good, good. Mm -hmm. Good.